<laughs> I think I think I think Jonathan, I think Jonathan would agree with me lah, huh? yeah. right? Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he told me on the WhatsApp. It's like, oh, uh-huh. I knew <laughs> it lah. I knew it. Okay. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. See you. See you, All boss. Right. Good day and good evening to all. Welcome to Uten Day. We would like to welcome everyone from near and from far as well. So besides local registration, we have also um, registration from actually Kenya, Senegal, Thailand, and also our neighboring friends, Singapore. And we would like to make a special mention of the Singapore Prison Department and also the Yellow Ribbon Project. The U-turn project was inspired by it. U-turn day under the U-turn project by Malaysian Care is a public advocacy for the reintegration of ex-offenders. It is built on the three core values, which are equal opportunity, family reconciliation, and community acceptance. As we move on to today's event, I would like to introduce two of our MCs today, we have Muhammad Hafizi and Chris. Hafizi was our client in Sekolah Integrity Kajang, a juvenile center under Penjara Kajang, but is now our friend and also a supporter of the project and also a registered prison volunteer with Malaysian Care. Chris has been serving with the Catholic Prison Fellowship Association for the past eight years and is also the current secretary of the CPFA. Now, without further ado, I would like to welcome Hafizi and Chris. You may take Good, af- Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, my name is Christopher here. Hi semua, Assalamualaikum dan selamat petang. Nama saya Hafizi, rakan pengacara kepada Christopher untuk event Newton Day hari ini. We would like to invite everyone to this amazing session brought to you by Malaysian Care together with partnership by Catholic Prison Fellowship Association. Hai terima kasih kepada anda semua yang sudi menghari, menghadiri event secara maya pada hari ini. Bersempena dengan norma baru pada masa kini, kita mula untuk beralih kepada event-event yang bersifat maya seperti ini. So U-turn day hari ini dijalankan secara maya. Pihak kami sudah menyediakan pelbagai acara yang padat sempena pengisian U-turn Day 2021. Antara pengisian yang kita isi untuk sempena program hari ini, kita ada persembahan hebat daripada Oyen Hazrail. Kita punya artis jemputan sempena U-turn Day today. Selain daripada itu juga, kita ada forum yang disediakan. Kita menjemput pelbagai panelis yang berkaliber untuk berkongsi cerita dan kisah mereka yang sama-sama membantu proses reintegration ini. Selain daripada itu juga kita ada banyak aktiviti lain seperti kuis, kita juga ada message of, uh, of hope dan pelbagai aktiviti yang kami sediakan untuk hada- uh, tatapan anda semua pada hari ini. That's right. We have amazing performance lined up for you and also a special sharing of his personal experience from our very own MC himself, Mr. Hafizi. You excited right Hafizi? Yes, excited today. <laughs> Okay, I have a special announcement as well here. Now, uh, these are some rules and regulations of this Zoom session at this time. So the chat box is only limited to communication with host and co-host. Please turn on your video so that we will be able to connect with you more. I think face-to-face connection is more better than uh, just not, not having seen anyone. So, But it's just up to you. Okay, I just uh, leave it up to you all. So if you are able, you're comfortable to on the video, you can. And please stay muted to prevent any disruption towards host and guests. Yeah. And at the end of the session, you are encouraged to unmute yourself and join in the fellowship. We'll have a short chit chat and all that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris, for the announcement. So we move for the first event, for the first activity today is the opening address. So can I check with Dr. Kausalia? Are you there? Okay, so I proceed. So, by the way, today, opening address, we will invite Dr. Kausalia Devi. So, for your information, 
Dr. Kausalia adalah individu hebat, wanita hebat di sebalik tirai besi yang semua orang tak sangka. Beliau menjadi tulang belakang yang sangat hebat kepada bahagian pemulihan dan pendidikan Jabatan Penjara Malaysia. Tugas beliau sangat besar, memainkan peranan yang sangat penting untuk memastikan proses pemulihan, pendidikan untuk para banduan di dalam berjaya untuk mencapai matlamat untuk sesi pemulihan banduan-banduan di dalam. So untuk tidak membuang masa, saya menjemput Timbalan Komisioner Penjara Dr. Kausela Devi untuk memulakan opening address beliau. Dengan segala hormatnya, dipersilakan. Okay, thank you MC Hafizi. Uh, a very good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Um, first and foremost, I would like to acknowledge and congratulate Malaysian Care for taking the lead in initiating this uh, U-turn project uh, in an effort to tackle emerging issues and challenges in the process of uh, reintegration. As we all know, the purpose of uh, imprisonment or similar measures deprivative of a person's uh, liberty is primar primarily to protect society against crime and to reduce recidivism. These purposes can be achieved only if the period of imprisonment is used to ensure the reintegration of such persons into society upon release so that they can leave, lead a law-abiding uh, and self-supporting life. However, um, incarceration is in reality brings more harm than benefits. When inmates are being sent to the prison, they lose their home, their job, their relationship with their families, and in fact, imprisonment creates instant poverty among families of the incarcerated. From the uh, statistics of the prison department, it shows that almost 95 to 97% of those who are incarcerated are being released every year. So this is a huge number compared, compared to the, um, uh, the persons who are, who are actually st uh, staying back in the prisons for, for some reasons. So with this huge number of people going back to the, the society, um, we realize that reintegration issue is a big uh, or in, in, a very, in a very vital uh, issue. In comparison, the recidivism rates among inmates who are released from prison and those who are released on parole mark a significant difference. The rates are 15.8% to 0.5% respectively. And uh, you, from the statistics, we can, we, we can see that um, the recidivism rates among parolees are better because it, uh, the effort taken in the parole system to assist and support uh, provided to parolees to undergo rehabilitation in the community while serving sentences. Most of the inmates face, um, as they are being released, uh, most of the inmates face significant social adaptation issues, which can include family and community stigmatization, the ensuing impact on the ability to find job or housing, unless these inmates receive help to face these issues. They keep getting caught up in a vicious cycle of failed social reintegration, reoffending, reconviction, re and social re rejection. When they face such situation, returning to the society is a big challenge, especially for those who are locked away for a lengthy period of time. On release, they can easily get back into a cycle of reoffending and difficult to establish what we consider to be a normal life. Thus, the primary objective of re and reintegration program is to provide inmates with assistance and supervision that they may need to desist from crime, to successfully reintegrate into the community and to avoid a relapse into criminal behavior. Efforts should be taken at three levels, which is prison-based uh, rehabilitation program, reintegration and mainly on the aftercare of uh, this, those inmates who, upon their release. It is important to ensure steps taken to help inmates secure jobs, accommodation, suitable and continuous intervention programs to help them to be crime-free. Prison departments have close collaborations with various employers who provide stable job and with steady income. This strategic partnership ensures inmates engage in gainful employment 
keeping them involved and attached to useful activities which keeps them away from criminal activities. With their earnings, they are able to support their family financially and execute the duty and responsibility as a father or mother, husbands or wives and children. Investment in prisons alone without any complementary investment in the post-release sessions are often insufficient to address uh, the, the reintegration issue. So realizing on the importance of ensuring reintegration a successful one, the prison department has embarked on various efforts. Firstly, early intervention such as ensuring family acceptance and support is given priority by facilitating prison visits. We encourage family to, to come and visit uh, their loved ones in the prisons to show the care and support that they will uh, provide them while in the prisons and as well as upon release. It is proven that inmates who receive family visitation through research, many research have concluded that um, inmates who receive family visitation have better family support, which is much needed by inmates upon release. Secondly, focusing on rehabilitating inmates through structured and holistic approach helps in upgrading their ability to think and act according to the rules and regulations. Rehabilitation programs also enable the inmates to overcome crime-related issues like addiction to drugs and other substances. Rehabilitation supports the reintegration of inmates as a means of preventing further crime and protecting society. And thirdly, developing reintegration initiatives that support inmates to rejoin the society without reverting to old habits. For example, halfway houses to accommodate inmates who have problems with accommodation, family refusing to accept, or those who do not wish to return to the previous setting in fear of returning to old habits. Thus, today's session or uh, today's this uh, U-turn project is a is a vital step forward to reduce prison returns rates or recidivism, recidivism rates and towards to, uh, in creating safer community and nation. So um, besides the, the rehabilitation, reintegration, uh, another, another um, biggest challenge is on uh, restorative uh, effort. Yeah? A lot of um, efforts has been taken to um, ensure that uh, inmates who are released will go back to the society and being accepted by the society. But um, we find very much challenges in uh, taking up these steps because it does it, it involves a lot of um, a lot of um, people and the acceptance by people in, in, in accepting the, the wrongdoings is not as great as uh, how we expect. So I think a lot of focus has to be done on the risk uh, restorative so that both parties can enjoy life uh, peacefully. However, if we um, realize that if we fail to reintegrate uh, an ex-inmate into the society, there are direct and indirect costs to the community. If inmates fail, they will re-offend. Community safety is compromised through increased crime. There is uh, costs associated with policy and edu adjudicating these new offenses and costs of administering new sanctions. So there's a lot of costs involved and especially for the, the prison's department um, in maintaining a prisoner from the time of he uh, from admission to the release, um, either through rehabilitation program or providing uh, necessary needs for the inmates till bringing him back into the society. So further, ex-inmates and family rely, it's not only the inmates whom we have to take care of, the family will also rely on social resources rather than contributing to the society, which means they will be becoming a liability to the uh, nation. So um, although the, the whole process sounds very tough, but I'm very confident that with dedicated community groups, such as Malaysian Care and other NGOs who have been working very uh, hand in hand with uh, the prisons department, uh, uh, volunteers from the agencies, NGOs who are doing an excellent job to assist 
ex inmates into returning to the society successfully. So I I I must thank all the NGOs and uh, individuals, uh, agencies, companies who have actually come a long way uh, in assisting the uh, prison department. So uh, to conclude, there is a need to collaborate to stop or minimize reoffending so that it helps the inmates, society, and tax and taxpayers. And finally, my appreciation to Malaysian Care for uh, giving the prison department the opportunity to participate in this project. And I wish you a very productive and successful section, session. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Kausalia. Thank you for your in the for for the great insight actually. Yeah. So um, I'm very I'm, I'm very touched with especially the the point that you mentioned, especially the uh, where the families has been uh, is very much affected compared to the prisoners themselves. That is a very um, uh, something that we really need to look at actually. Yeah. And now. Uh, Okay, guys, we will have this uh, word cloud reflection here. Yeah? Okay, now um, please scan this uh, QR code here, and we also have this uh, uh, link here where it's meant uh, put it in the chat box here. Yeah? Let's take a moment to reflect on the words from Dr. Kausalia. Please scan this QR code, log in, share your thoughts. Yeah, so you can start doing it now. Yeah, the important point here that I'd like to like you always reflect upon is like what is the one thing that impacted you after hearing Dr. Kausalia? For me, I felt that it was the families of the inmates that was uh, that was uh, that's having problem, especially with the stigma that they have with the society and all that. So you can share what you think uh, in this uh, in this link here. So we'll have our technical team to just uh, put up some of the messages. And I'll read up some of the messages in a while. Yeah, so everyone, kita minta untuk kerjasama semua untuk sama-sama scan QR code, share sedikit ataupun one word about uh, perkongsian yang Dr. Kalsal dah sampaikan tadi. So kalau saya, saya dapat merasai sendirilah bagaimana apa yang dikongsikan oleh Dr. Kalsal tadi sebab saya sendiri merasai bagaimana uh, susahnya orang cakap bergelar sebagai ex prisoner nak face to the society apa yang dikatakan Dr. Kausala sangat benar so apa yang saya nak minta untuk semua orang hari ini yang ada pada event kita hari ini untuk sama-sama kongsikan one word berkaitan dengan kita punya uh, perkongsian yang dah disampaikan oleh Dr. Kausala tadi Yeah, we have some messages here. Yes. Yeah, one word. Here we go. We have collaboration, community, acceptance, family. Yeah, acceptance, especially on this uh, acceptance part, because that's what I uh, mentioned earlier when we're looking at the stigma, right, uh, Hafizi? I think yes, you yes, know, on this, on this, uh, um, when when people uh, they just go into prison, not only the uh, the, the prisoners is been um, it's been condemned. The whole family, the society, is been is, is 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 having the problem. The children, when they want to go to school or anything like that, they they, they have that, that impact there as well. Correct. Yes, correct, correct. Yeah. So, so we can say that the word acceptance and family there, they are yeah. big word today for yeah. our what our doctor Kausala really share with us. Stigmatization. So we need for we need uh, community acceptance for a reintegration process of the ex offenders. Empathy. There's another word here, empathy, that I like to share. As well. Empathy. It's it's uh it's not sympathy, but it's empathy. Empathy is where we actually uh, uh, put in go in the shoes of the uh, family members at how and we definitely cannot actually be there, right? But right. We, we we share it into their feelings, you know, to uh, not to give them a solution, but to help them to you know move forward in their life. That yes, is correct. Something that we can do. Yeah, we are getting some more. 
thought provoking ya yeah, that's interesting hmm, kalau kalau kita punya apa tetamu yang hadir hari ni tanya kenapa accepted and family tu besar because dalam word cloud ni kita cakap siapa yang uh, voting the word yang keluar tu sama so dia akan menjadi lebih besar So kalau ramai lagi kita punya tetamu yang hadir hari ini berkongsi ataupun mengatakan love is the best word untuk kita share berkaitan dengan Dr. Kausalia tadi so love word will be become bigger and bigger. Correct, uh, correct. I can see community going up. Yes. <laughs> the font of community is going up. Oh. <laughs> More words coming already. Yeah, that's why. Right. Uh, see, see, community is community. up now. <laughs> yes, correct. Let's voting, guys. Let's <laughs> collaboration. On this. Yeah, come on, people. We need all your help here. It's very easy. Scan the QR code, or there's a link there in the, can, in the chat box. Go in yeah, and then can. participate. You see, collaboration already come in also. Collaboration. <laughs> yeah. Hope. Hope. Yes. I think. Hope. It's a, it's a very, very strong word, right? Hope. Hope is, uh, mm. they are hopeful. The family That's is hopeful. That's a really big, big word for us. Everyone. Yes. Everyone. I think, I think in the, I mean, uh, visiting, visiting prisons, uh, the, the first thing in their mind, the, uh, the main image is hope. They're hoping for something. Hoping That's for, correct. They also hope for their family members being treated well by the community, right? That is, yes. that is another another hope that they have. And then as a prisoner also, they are always hope that society can accept them after they are released from the prison. Yes, yeah, that's true. So we have a big, num- big names here, uh, big words here like, sorry, acceptance, family, community, collaboration, hope is coming up. When I say hope, we hope coming up. <laughs> it's like love, love coming okay. in as well. We'll give in about about another 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 one minute. One, two, one, yes. Yeah? Technical team. So you can see family were already coming or new. Yeah. Family acceptance. Yeah. <laughs> I think that Dr. Kausalia put it put it rightly uh, on that on that point there actually. Okay. Okay, guys. So thank you for your participating on our word club today. So let me move on to our next session today. Okay, so today we will next session will be inspiring artist performance. So um, hari ni kita akan mendengar sebuah uh, persembahan yang dibawa khas oleh Oyen Hazril. Uh, ramai orang yang tak kenal Oyen Hazril. Rupanya Oyen Hazril merupakan salah seorang artis yang hebat ya. Yang kita ramai orang cakap di luar jangkaan. Kita pun tak tahu. So akhirnya hari ini kita bawakan Oyen Hazril untuk menyampaikan performan beliau. So sebagai seorang bekas ex-offender sendiri, saya mendapat ilham untuk berdikari, untuk memastikan kehidupan, untuk memastikan kehidupan saya berjaya di masa hadapan. So dengan itu saya berbangga untuk menjemput artis yang mempunyai latar belakang yang cukup hebat dan mencetabat ini. So saya minta rakan baik saya untuk kongsikan kepada anda sedikit latar belakang berkaitan dengan Oyen Hazrail. So, pass to you, Chris. Yes, yes. Oyen Hazrail. Oyen Hazrail. Yeah, here. Yeah. Um, it's uh, not, I don't know a lot of you who have known him or not, but he is actually one of the uh, the winner of the Wise International Music Award, Vima, male vocalist for the year 2018. And he's also a graduate from the Aswara and full-time vocalist from the Kuala Lumpur Orchestra. And here is important, the, the most important thing here now. I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised on this and I'm, 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 I'm excited to see Oyen Azriel here is because he was also selected to perform live by the international music maestro uh, Ayar Rahman. I think you all know this movie Slumdog Millionaire. Have you seen, have you seen the movie Slumdog Millionaire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The background music, the composer, he won the Oscar award for Ayar Rahman. And Ayar Rahman actually selected Oyen Azriel to perform in his Infinite Love concert in Kuala Lumpur. Isn't that amazing, Avizi? Yes, yeah, so amazing. I mean, it's great. We, we, we used to see live concert from famous artists from overseas and now let us get a taste of our own Malaysian homegrown talent. Without delay here, let's watch a video performance by our Oyen Hasdeo. Here we go. Yeah, 
Here we go. Uh, just a second, yeah. Just a second. I think uh, we need sound. Yeah, yeah. We give technical team to handle this first. <coughs> ah, here we go. Right. Enjoy. Hi everyone. Say Oyen. Say I can. Menendangkan sebuah lagu original saya. This song is called Bangkit. Bangkit menceritakan tentang seseorang yang jatuh pada suatu ketika dulu dan seterusnya hendak bangkit kembali. Terimalah Bangkit. Hope you like it. Perkenalkan diri saya uh, Saya Oyen 
uh, singer songwriter dan uh, musician Firstly, I want to thank say thank you to Malaysian Care uh, for inviting me. Terima kasih. Okay, saya Oyen. Lagi sekali. Um, saya clean daripada drugs dan sober. Uh, genap tujuh tahun sekarang. Tujuh tahun. Uh, my drugs of choice it was uh, methamphetamine I enrolled myself uh, to rehab program under AADK for six months lepas uh, six months menjalani program tersebut uh, saya cukup bangkit tetapi perjalanan untuk bangkit um, perjalanan untuk bangkit saya sebagai uh, bekas uh, pengguna dadah teramatlah tidak senang sukar susah susah sebab uh, saya ramai hilang kawan ramai dah tak nak kawan dah dan ramai yang tak percaya kepada saya uh, dari segi kerja dan mereka dah tak nak bekerjasama dengan saya lagi tapi saya lucky, I'm lucky sebab saya ada uh, wife saya yang selesa support saya dan family to support me Saya nak cerita sikit pasal uh, lagu yang saya nyanyi tadi Lagu ciptaan saya Saya nak uh, Ungkap sikit uh, saya punya lirik tu Hidup takkan berubah kalau semuanya susah Hanya kau diam berserah Macam Maksudnya macam kita hidup kita takkan berubah Kalau kita diam saja berserah Maksudnya bila nak buat, buat something Oh ini susah lah Ini apa orang kata Nanti semuanya Cuma jadi tak jadi Kalau kita duduk berserah Serah kat Tuhan Apa nak jadi Jadilah takdir Pun tak boleh Kita kena usaha Dan Langkap keduanya Kau yang memandu minda Hanya kau kemudinya Tanpa hiraukan orang kata Kau yang uh, Yang Yang Memandu minda Maksudnya Kau yang Buat keputusan Kau yang drive Kau nak ke mana Hanya kau kemudian je Hanya kau yang driver Tak kisah apa pun orang kata Kau buat je Semuanya dari Kau Semuanya kau Kita Kalau kita nak Kita buat Tak payah nak risau apa orang kata Tak payah Dan apabila kita dah, dah yakin Dengan diri kita Dan kita nak support saya percaya support daripada keluarga adalah amat penting dan kalau kita yakin dan kita nak support Malaysian Care is here for you like me I dapat support daripada family terutama terutamanya wife saya dan I did it I win awards for my music I rebuilt myself I did it you can do it too Here, Malaysian case here for you. Thank you. Once again, thank you for inviting me. Okay. Before I end this session, I would like to sing another song for you guys. Yes. Okay, guys. So, kita akan saksikan video yang seterusnya. Uh, sekarang, tadi kita dengar versi Bahasa Melayu. Oh, rupanya kita ingatkan Oyen hanya boleh menggunakan video bahasa Melayu Rupanya dia ada juga lagu-lagu berbentuk bahasa Inggeris juga So hari ni kita akan terus sambung uh, Untuk video dan persembahan seterusnya daripada Oyen untuk lagu yang kedua Kita persilakan Once again, thank you for inviting me Okay Before I end this session I would like to sing another song 
for you guys you discover song something called lovely day by bill readers hope you like it test one two Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Malaysian Care. Bye. Wow, fantastic. So I invite everyone to give a virtual clap to Oyen Hadril. We can even clap so, here as well. Yeah, let's <laughs> give the virtual one. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, everyone. Yes. Right. All right. Thank you for the technical team. All right. Okay, so everyone, first of all, saya nak minta maaf on the behalf of 
uh, event team and also technical about the video ada lag sikit biasalah inilah masalah yang kita perlu hadapi tapi jangan risau saya rasa semua orang tak berpuas hati saya percaya tapi jangan risau hari ini saya membawakan anda kepada semua audien khas untuk anda sendiri dengar dan dengar kisah dan penceritaan daripada Oyen Hazril sendiri so I can see Oyen here right Okay, so tanpa membuang masa, saya rasa sangat bergembira, sangat happy untuk menjemput Oyen Hazril untuk memberikan sepatah dua kata sempena sesi U-turn day pada hari ini. So, saya menjemput Oyen Hazril. Hello, hi. Boleh dengar kan saya kan? Boleh, boleh. Yes, boleh. Yes. Okay, I'm glad to be here. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you to Malaysian Care for inviting me. Okey, saya percaya dengan adanya program-program macam ni masyarakat akan lebih peka uh, dan uh, support yang diperlukan oleh inmates. Support daripada family pun adalah penting. Dan jika sesiapa ingin mendapatkan bantuan atau support, Malaysian Care is here for you. Like me, uh, I have support from my family, terutamanya my wife. That's important because you can you have to yakin uh, to yourself but you have to be support as well, support uh, from your family as well, itu penting. Dan uh, my wife percaya kepada saya, so saya rebuild myself dan berjaya dan saya pada hari ni lah macam ni. Thank you, thank you Oyen. Thank you, it's really amazing to hear you uh, no, from your video. I know I know the video was a bit lacking, but I tell you, it is amazing. I tell you, the, all your you, audio. Uh, if uh, next next event i can do live as well <laughs> yes fantastic I'm, yes yes <laughs> we we are waiting for that oyen oyen right. i'm so glad I, especially I, I, the, the lyrics are just 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 to share with you something on the lyrics yang hidup takkan berubah kalau semua susah when yeah. you mention that that is really uh really hit on the note you know it's really uh, yeah. hit on us because it's it's how you have actually come up for your life and with the support of your family the community and all that you did not give up never give up and that has actually been and i think it is for this session the reintegration session for ex offenders i think it's really a good message for everybody thank you yeah. thank you thank you so much hidup takkan berubah kalau semuanya susah ya kalau kita still lagi duduk dalam uh, kepompong tu kita tak nak pecahkan dia keluar so kita tak boleh buat apa-apa semua rasa susah kita kata oh takut nak buat orang kata apa nanti so kita kena pecahkan so kita kena yakin pada diri kita kita boleh buat saya boleh semua orang boleh yes, that's correct. right yeah thank you so much oyen thank you so thank much you for your session yeah Happy please to be here. yeah please do stay on the sessions then you can actually enjoy this whole session yeah, as well yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you yeah. Okay, next we will move on to our next session, which is the forum. Okay, now our next session will be a special forum dedicated on three core values. To brief further on this, I would like to invite Sam Lim, manager of Malaysian Care, and Stephen K from Catholic Prison Fellowship Association (CPFA), who will be the moderator for this session. To you guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, MCs. It is really wonderful to be here, isn't it, Stephen? Stephen, uh, yeah, you need to unmute, lah, Stephen. How to talk lah, when you're mute. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, Sam. Yeah, thank you, MCs. It's a great feeling, Sam, to be here. It's actually an honor to be participating in this event. Right before we start the forum, right? Uh, we we want. I think it's only right for us to introduce ourselves, lah. Everybody yes. will be thinking, who oh, this fella is lah. Call himself and then say, oh, straight away, we want to go and do all these things all. So I think it's okay, right. We introduce ourselves. Um, okay. Uh, my name is Sam. Uh, and I've been in care for the past 12 years, uh, focusing on prison, drugs, and HIV-related ministry. Uh, I was an ex-addict, saved by the grace of God, to make the best part of my life, helping my my partner over here, Stephen. Stephen, would like to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Hi, everybody. My name is Stephen K from uh, Catholic Prison Fellowship Association. Uh, our task in the Catholic Prison Association is to visit the prisoners on a regular basis and bring them the word of God 
and enlighten them and also encourage them through the word of God. That's what we do. Now, we also uh, reintegrate and also coordinate with their family members to give the family members an update of how they are doing so that we can prepare them when they leave the prison to be well integrated back into society. That is our main uh, task that we do at CPFA. Back to you, Sam. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Now, before we begin, perhaps, Stephen, would you like to explain a little bit about how our um, participants over here can get connected with us um, through the platform of uh, connecting um, in the next slide, please? Yes, yeah, sure, Sam. Now, there is uh, a QR code that comes in front of you. You can actually scan this QR code. That is uh, one way. The other method is you can click on the link that you see in your chat box for you to put forward your questions, your concerns, where you can ask and, and it will be answered at a later point. Wonderful. And now, if I may take this very short time to briefly introduce our three panelists for today. We have Inche Momad Faiz from Suhakam. He is an officer from the Complaint and um, He'll be speaking in Bahasa Malaysia. And then we have Mr. Frederick Fu, who is also my colleague, so the development. He has got more than 10 years under his belt in his who is the executive vice president of MRCB and um, we want to thank all the panelists to join us today and so without further ado um, I would like to uh, call upon uh, Inche Faiz first as we speak about the um, first topic of the day the equal opportunity now, how are you? Uh, apa kabar, Encik Faiz? Baik, terima kasih, uh, Mr. Lim, uh, Mr. Sam, sorry, for inviting yeah. Soakam uh, to be part of this forum. Lah. Thank you. No problem. We yeah. we are really um, happy to have you with us today. Um, jadi, boleh ke tak perkenalkan sen uh, sendiri sedikit uh, tentang um, kamu dan juga kerja kamu di Suhakam? Baik, uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of commission, saya ingin mengucapkan terima kasih lah kepada Malaysian Care kerana sudi jemput Suakam to be part of this forum. Uh, before we go further, maybe I would like to explain about what is Suakam itself. So basically, Suakam is Suruhan Jaya Hak Asasi Manusia where we are established by the parliament uh, by the act of five, six, seven. So our main role is to educate uh, 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 the government or the public about human rights and also to give uh, advice to the government in terms of the policy or laws uh, relating to human rights. So uh, basically, saya sendiri daripada Complaints and Monitoring Division dan uh, tugas utama uh, Complaints Monitoring, of course, untuk menyiasat aduan berkaitan dengan any human rights violation lah. And also, we also uh, menjalankan uh, lawatan ke tempat-tempat tahanan seperti uh, lokap polis, penjara dan juga depot tahanan immigration. Thank you. Thank you for the short introduction. Um, uh, pada Untuk soalan pertama saya pada hari ini, um, Suhakam telah terbitkan sebuah buku yang bertajuk The Right to Health in Prison pada tahun uh, 2017. Um, selepas pesalah dibebaskan dari penjara, Adakah kesihatan kehidupan mereka sama seperti yang lain di komuniti? Jikalau tidak, apa yang boleh diperbaiki sebelum dan selepas mereka bebas daripada penjara? Alright, thank you Mr. Sam. Baik, uh, berkaitan dengan laporan yang dikeluarkan oleh SWAKAM pada 2017, basically this research was conducted to get uh, information from the prison, what kind of issues they are facing in the prison. So based from the res this research, uh, beberapa dapatan daripada SWAKAM kita mendapati uh, isu utama yang paling pertinan dalam prison adalah sekarang ni overcrowded. Dan selain itu juga dari segi kebajikan kaki tangan, uh, they have lack in manpower dan juga daripada segi fasiliti kesihatan juga memang uh, agak limited. So uh, berdasarkan soalan yang dikemukakan oleh Mr. Sam, I think 
uh, as for now, prison have provided a decent uh, medical uh, assistance to the prison uh, because in every prison now, uh, they have uh, placed a medical assistant and medical officer to give uh, health services to all prisoners. And also, uh, kita juga mendapati terdapat juga servis uh, perawatan gigi yang diberikan juga kepada banduan uh, dan kalau boleh saya sebut contoh adalah seperti di penjara Taiping. Okay. Dan setiap banduan ni, mereka telah dibekalkan dengan rekod kesihatan which can be used uh, during the, during their, their detention and as well after their release. So, means that the record kesihatan akan diberikan kepada bekas banduan dan boleh dibawa untuk untuk mereka mendapatkan rawatan jika uh, uh, rekod kesihatan mereka tu masih ada dan boleh dibawa apabila mereka telah dibebaskan. So, to answer whether they have received a, a right to health in uh, prison, I think setiap individu uh, berhak kepada perkhidmatan kesihatan yang disediakan oleh pihak kerajaan lah. Dan as for now, uh, in uh, in complaints, I think for Suhakam, we did not receive any complaints or being brought to Suhakam when the ex-prisoners, uh, after they have been released, they receive or denied uh, their health services from the private or the government uh, services. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'm I'm hearing quite a lot of things over here. Um, you're mentioning that there's been overcrowding issue. I think this yep. has been quite some time now. Yep. And a prison department has been doing their best to provide the best health service that is possible inside the prison. Yep. Uh, but however, oleh kerana overcrowding, it's going to be a very, very difficult thing to do, right? Very tough, yeah. Uh, and, and we understand this situation, definitely. And of course, the question also um, goes a little bit beyond um, inside the prison. Um, hmm. apa, adakah mereka juga mendapat um, layanan equal opportunity apabila mereka bebas daripada penjara. So, that leads to my second question here, Faiz. Now, yeah. adakah pesalah dan adakah bekas pesalah dapat peluang sama rata untuk mendapatkan peluang untuk lanjutan pelajaran ataupun um, apa-apa yang mereka boleh buat dalam hidup? Uh, hmm. Apa apa apa, apa um, pandangan kamu? Baik. So as I mentioned earlier, Mr. Sam, I think uh, we have uh, we have visited, uh, I think most of the prison in Malaysia, and uh, for example in Penjara Kajang, if I can mention here, I think uh, Penjara Kajang have a wonderful uh, cooperation with Open University of Malaysia, where where they uh, collaborate and to 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 give uh, services. I mean to 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 give a chance to the prisoners to uh, further their studies. And some of the prisoners uh, already have graduated in diploma and degree as well in even in PhD uh, uh, based from our visit. So uh, uh, another thing is Penjara uh, also they have their own scholar integrity. Uh, it started in 2010. Then it uh, basically for scholar integrity uh, specifically to give uh, further education to young, uh, young young prisoner, banduan-banduan muda. So means that uh, kalau mana-mana banduan muda yang masuk ke dalam penjara, mereka masih lagi ada peluang untuk uh, melanjutkan pelajaran atau menyamu pelajaran mereka. Contohnya daripada segi PMR dan juga SPM. So uh, to answer back your question whether this uh, right has been uh, uh, allocated to the prisoner, whether they can further their study or not, Of course, suakan berpandangan bahawa setakat ini penjara telah menyediakan kesewajarnya lah hak kepada pendidikan kepada banduan-banduan dan hak ini tidak tidak boleh dinafikan lah. Hmm. And dari segi uh, uh, selepas ataupun ex-prisoners, whether they can further their study, setakat ini uh, I think from Suakam, uh, we're not sure about what kind of policy that government have. But uh, as for now, so complaint from complaints monitoring perspective, we did not receive any complaints. Uh, when the ex-prisoner want to further their study, they have, been, they have been denied. So there's no such complaint that Suakam has been received lah, as for now. Thank you. Thank you for your answer, Faiz. So if I file a complaint now, so it, I will be the first one. Yes. To, to complain, yeah? <laughs> yes, Mr. Sam. <laughs> yeah, I, I came to know a person who actually um, did not manage to receive PTPTN. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I, I would suspect it's because of the person's background. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking the question whether um, does PTPTN or any 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 of this policy, right, is mm -hmm. actually stopping an ex-offender from moving on in their life by getting a proper education. Mm. So uh, as I mentioned, Mr. Sam, I, we are not sure what kind of policy that PTPTN or government have currently. But uh, maybe uh, I can uh, propose this to further uh, to, I mean, maybe have a roundtable discussion with the government. As you know, we, we, we previously we have conduct a roundtable discussion, uh, reintegration uh, prisoner into the community. This, yes. this issue has been brought up as well. So yeah. maybe so can we put further these issues. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, all right. So I'll be the first person to file a complaint now. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, as we move on to the third question, um, hmm. uh, apakah yang dibuat, apakah yang boleh dibuat untuk menolong seorang bekas pesalah hmm. uh, agar beliau boleh diberi peluang yang sama rata untuk mendapatkan kerja juga? Hmm. Um, you know, what can we actually do in, in helping them to move on in life? Hmm, betul. Baik. So, uh, we also came to know that Every prisoners, when they uh, been in prison, they have been provided with skill and vocational training in some in some prison, if I'm not mistaken. So I think for for uh, uh, penjara telah menyediakan peluang ataupun skill atau kemahiran kepada bandar-bandar untuk mereka melengkapkan diri mereka apabila mereka telah uh, dibebaskan. So skill ini atau kemahiran ini boleh digunakan untuk mereka mendapatkan pekerjaan ataupun membuka uh, membuka Uh, perniagaan sendiri. Walaupun uh, perkara ini mungkin tidak cukup dan uh, that's why lah so hakam uh, we have take, taken initiative to to discuss about reintegration prisoners into the community then we have found that some initiative been taken by prison department as well as NGO to 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 come to come with some uh, some initiative to 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 place uh, prisoners back into community and also to provide them with a better job so right. uh, some some of the initiative that i can mention here is program corporate smart internship so mm -hmm. this collaboration between fepra samdabi the big players in industry so yeah. uh, i think uh, this one is a uh, maybe the stepping stone for 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 better uh, policy next right Wonderful. Yeah, when you talk about the corporate smart internship, right? So mm. later on, we'll be speaking to MRCB, Dr. Del Akba, and he will mm. be speaking more about that because they are one of the biggest players. Yeah. Um, however, I remember reading through a research back in the year 2018 um, that actually about 70% to 80% of employer masih mm. lagi tidak mahu um, um, to hire an ex-offender because they have a background mm -hmm. uh, what, what would your comment be eh? or perhaps what would your encouragement for them of course the the, the main thing should be the government government should uh, open this uh, or, or give awareness about uh, what should be done with the ex-prisoners for example we also know that most of the ex-prisoners cannot uh, be participate in the, as a government servant right So uh, I think from Swakam perspective, so, uh, government should give uh, should uh, should be a main player to expose about uh, these prisoners can give a, uh, can have a better or second chance to be a part in the government service. When this happens, so other players or other companies maybe will follow this uh, this this step. Wonderful. So what I'm hearing from you is that perhaps government can play a an active role. Yeah, and you, the government can actually inspire or perhaps yeah. encourage the rest of the key players in the economy to be part mm. of to be part of the solution into hiring ex offenders. Yeah, you no, know, we we would love to see that happen, and mm. and definitely that would open up a lot of opportunity yes. for all the ex offenders. Yes, thank you so much for for all these comments. Before we end now, um, perhaps if I may ask uh, one last question to you, uh, Jifa is yes. What would your um, recommendation or perhaps your advice be to the public in terms of providing equal opportunity to ex offenders? I think uh, this kind of program is one of the stepping stone to give awareness to the public. 
right? And Swakam also will play an uh, important role to give awareness where we, 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 we have a specific division uh, to promote uh, human rights uh, values to the public and maybe we can cooperate this further maybe in future so 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 the, the the because the main thing i think as personally personally uh i think the stigma is still there then we want to eliminate the stigma that everyone is equal everyone is deserve a second chance uh so so uh yeah that's my 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 wonderful idea. wonderful so uh, we know that in the community we still have stigma we still have prejudices yep no, we still have discrimination. Um, even, in, I think, if I'm not mistaken, dalam borang untuk mendapatkan kerja kan, there's a part always that you need to always feel. Uh, adakah anda mempunyai latar yes. jenayah? <laughs> mm. To me, that that was something, you know, it, it's not it's not wrong to ask, but actually, if if it becomes the determining factor to hire a person, if a person coming from an ex-offending background, then I think it should not be. Lah. So, so you. Thank you so much, Encik Faiz, for your time Thank today. You, Mr. Thank you. So, Stephen, you have heard so many things about the equal opportunity that can be given to um, the ex-offenders. Yes, sir. There is a lot of opportunities available for them. Yeah. Um, they will have uh, very little uh, issues in getting themselves reintegrated back into society. Yeah, but of course, they will need support. And of course, for the, for the next... Panelists, I, I would allow you to, in, to, to invite Mr. Frederick into the picture. Yes, thank you. Welcome, Mr. Frederick Fu. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Mr. Frederick is the Director of Service Development for Malaysian Care. And uh, he has been with Malaysian Care for a period of about 10 years now. And his major uh, service and also task pertaining to Malaysian care will be on helping the needy and the poor. Welcome again, Mr. Frederick Fu, and thank you for being here with us for this particular event. We are very pleased to have you this afternoon. Thank you for your invitation. So, Mr. Frederick Fu, probably you could tell us a little bit about yourself, just to introduce uh, to the rest of us, what, are you, what do you do in Malaysian care? Yeah, so um, I started in Malaysian care as a committee staff. At uh, that time, I was a very raw, fresh, no experience at all working with prisoners. Uh, but all I want to do is just to be involved in community work. And I was uh, sent to uh, the prison drugs and AIDS division. And so I've grown uh, from there. And today I'm leading uh, the service development department to improve the services uh, that we are delivering, not just for prison, but also other areas of services uh, uh, under care. Uh, so this is what I'm doing currently. That's a very noble activity you're doing, Mr. Frederick. Yeah, thank you for your introduction. Now, uh, this afternoon, our discussion is going to be on family reconciliation. Now, as you know that uh, those who are in prison and when they get released from prison, they seem to have a kind of a stigma in themselves as to how the society tends to perceive them. And, and also the acceptance rate uh, becomes a challenge for many of them. So, Mr. Frederick, in your opinion, how important do you think is uh, family reconciliation for the ex-prisoners for them to get reintegrated into the society? Could you please give us your view? Yes. Um, yeah, talking about reconciliation, as I reflect upon this word, um, what to mind is a picture which I'd like to share uh, to all of you. I hope you all can see. All right, so... Um, this is a picture that came to my mind when uh, talking about reconciliation. Uh, this is called Kintsugi. If some of you may not know, uh, this is a Japanese art of uh, mending and repairing broken potteries by using lacquer, which is dusted by uh, gold dust. Right. Okay. And so, um, as you can see in the picture, uh, these are broken pots 
and then uh, through Kintsugi, uh, towards the right, you can see it can be mended, repaired to such a beautiful pot pottery. Okay. So when talking about reconciliation, uh, there are three points I'd like to share with us here. Um, the process is one is very delicate and it's a very sensitive uh, work. And not everyone could do this. Okay. And number two, it also requires time and it cannot be rushed and it uh, cannot be even forced. Uh, it has to come naturally at its own pace. And the third is, some of us may live to see the outcome of this, the product, but it may also may not live to be able to see uh, reconciliation happens. That's a reality. Yeah. So talking about family reconciliation, um, this is a picture that I could think of. Uh, this is uh, back in 2019, uh, where one of our uh, uh, this uh, one of our men who released from Kajan prison and came to our rumor Petros. Um, yeah, this is a one of the most wonderful picture of family reconciliation that I could find in my archive. And a little story about this is uh, this man came out to us and when we do the assessment and ask him about his family, he realized that he lost in touch and couldn't locate his family. All he could tell us is they are somewhere in Slayang, one of the welfare home, because uh, the family can't uh, take care of themselves. They are under welfare homes and they've been moved from one place to another. So he really wants to be reunited with the family, but that is the only info that we get. So how to the whole of Salayang and then KL you know, to find the kid. <laughs> but somehow one thing leads to another. At that time, we have a new staff, uh, Brother Martin Joseph. I'm not sure he's here or not. He was very new. And when he heard about this, he said that he may know someone uh, working in the community in Salayang. Uh, there's a pastor. And he said, okay, let's, uh, let me try out. And he connected with the pastor. And the pastor recommend to another person who are uh, more well versed And so happened uh, by chance, they contacted uh, one of the welfare home managers and uh, discovered that the manager uh, know this family. And so there was uh, a lot of information sharing. So to cut the story short, the family has moved no more in Slayang, but in Penang. And so we uh, uh, arranged for one of our staff to drive uh, him all the way up to Penang to meet the family. It was a long journey. I remember the staff also, uh, yeah, the car, our old Malaysian care, some of our vehicles are also broke down and then caught in the rain. <laughs> so, but I remember our staff, Eric, uh, when he arrived at this home in Penang, another welfare home and uh, this man met the children, as you can see, four children, and there's a newborn, very young one, and a wife. Um, wow, <laughs> the picture, you know, it's the family reconciliation. It's so joyous, so hope-filled. And Eric came back saying that, you know, after all the hassle, uh, no problem, all the car break down and the caught in the rain, got wet, it's worth it looking at the picture of family reconciliation. Uh, so this is one, one of the story that uh, picture that I could think of. However, I'd like to share a bit about our care work about with prisoners through the years. Uh, some of my observation. We work, uh, talking about prisoners, we work with juveniles. And for juveniles, I'll, I'll say that majority of them are uh, well received by their families. And as here, you can see Hafizi. Eh? Uh, so proud of him today, you can see him and seeing. <laughs> Hafizi's parents are, has been very supportive all this one, the mom, the father. And, and that's why you can see Hafizi today, he's so flourishing. Eh? And we are very happy for him. Okay. And another group are the adults. And adults are talking about not just men, but also women. 
we are women and men. And through our experience, uh, our caseworkers and staff, we realized that a uh, majority of them are not so lucky as the, the juveniles because many of them face difficulties uh, recon reconciliating with their families. Okay. And uh, the situation becomes even harder okay, when uh, there are those released from prison, but they also have the issue of substance abuse and addiction background. So even the families are very wary of receiving them back again. And today I'm so glad to hear from Oyen <laughs> and to listen to your music and your story. I have to say that, yeah, you are really blessed to have such a wife that has been so supportive of you because I've come across uh, many uh, who does not uh, able to enjoy that. Yeah. So uh, please continue to yeah love shower your wife with love and appreciation and all. Continue. That's that's a really rare blessing. And so uh, yeah, singles they do have struggles to be accepted again. And uh, there's also the the adults talking about adults the married ones, um, especially when the spouse uh, is not willing to accept them. They will really struggle uh, when they are rejected and more so when they are disallowed to see their own children, those with kids and very young kids that come across. Recently, um, one of our men, uh, this is a father, he has a very young daughter and wife. And uh, this is exactly his struggle. He has not been able to reconcile with his wife and daughter. And recently, I still remember, I think just a few days ago, he was sharing with me. This is what he said. He said, I've been already sentenced by the court and I paid the consequences of my mistakes. Now that I'm released, I admitted to all my wrongs and I want to make amend. Why is she still sentencing me to death? And this brother, he, he fell into depression and it's very serious and we are very, very concerned for him. Other, other men may not fall into depression, but will struggle with frustration, anger and rage because they want to make a man, uh, you know, they admit that they have done a lot of mistakes in the past. But the other side, the other party just is not willing or not ready to receive them. And so some of them, unfortunately, um, they go back. The way how they cope with all this is they may go back to the old practices, like drinking. Uh, it, it, sounds, it sounds to me, uh, Fred, that actually the support is actually very important when the person actually gets back into the community or perhaps the family. And, and hence why... I'm hearing from you depression, I'm hearing from you relapse, I'm hearing from you for the fact that the person is unable to get connected back into the community. That's right. Yeah, so it's actually a very sad situation for the fact that they have come out from prison and yet they still don't get, after paying what they have done in the past um, in due, and after that they come out, they are all back in the second prison in the community. Without that's the right. family support. Yeah. That, so. That's the reality of it. Yeah. And so you have a client who goes through it, you know, time and time again and his coping skill his coping way was drinking. So getting drunk. And I have to each time he'll call me up and I have to be there to listen to him and bear with him. But okay. yeah, these are the true challenges and struggles of talking about family reconciliation. And, and I think that goes into the second question, which was um, supposed to be um, wanted to ask you, is that um, how can actually the case managers and others providing support to the ex-prisoners to help promote the family reconciliation? Yeah, um, it's not easy. Uh, we've been talking about the, the uh, prisoners or those who are released. I think we also need to think about the families because families and like the spouse, they have their reasons or why they are not accepting. Uh, we also need to hear from the other side. 
what is their story, what are the deep hurts that they're going through, and to, if possible, to journey with both sides, uh, to be the mediator, and hopefully, if that's the opportunity, to bring the reconciliation. Right. Well, Mr. Prasik, would you, would you agree that, uh, as you know, that when prisoners, they are released from after serving their terms, they come into a society and, and the society may not be prepared to accept them. And, and this poses a lot of struggles between both the prisoners who are ex-prisoners and also the society, in this case, the family, because the, the family might feel that, you know, how are they going to face their relatives? How are they going to face their friends, the warders uh, got around? So I think, would you agree by, by, by this, that the families need to be continuously uh, educated and, and trained and also being counseled to, to see how the prisoners are able to be accepted back into the family. Preparing the family members uh, to accept them in a, with an open heart. What's your take on that, Mr. Frederick? Yeah, that's one need to educate or even prepare the families. But I'll say in the beginning, that's why each of us here, we have volunteers here and uh, those who are involved in the prison work, uh, advocacy and all. Um, I think our role are very important, especially the beginning part. How do we uh, reconcile the inmates and the family? Because uh, we are the bridging gap and it is it can be very helpful. Because, like we mentioned, the family does not trust them anymore due to the past. And we are the one who can stand alongside them to even vouch for them, that to journey with them, that they have been changing. At least there's some progress. And with the time factor, uh, we can come in together to also relate to the family, hey, to testify, you know, I've been journeying with him for how many years? And these are the changes to convince them and slowly in the hope that the family will gain the trust and to rebuild again. Yeah. So basically acting as a, as a bridge between uh, they are being rehabilitated and yeah. recovered and the family being accepted. And that's I think that's a very crucial role that uh, people who are like us playing right in the middle, the middleman's role in, yes. in, in getting them accustomed Yes, that uh, sounds takes like, us, Sounds like yeah, a lot right. of work over there, huh, Fred? <laughs> yeah, I just want to share, please be prepared for a long haul journey, going through with them the ups and downs, critical times, and there'll be lots of extra miles to walk with them. Uh, it's not easy, but it's worth it, I'll say. Thank you, thank you. Due to time, we would like to have one last question for you. Um, what would your advice be to our listeners in the context of ex offenders reintegration and family reconciliation? So, what would your advice be to those who are attending here today and also to those who are listening to us in the YouTube? I'll say that um, it has to begin. It has to begin with us if we really have the intention and the heart to want to see prisoners or ex-prisoners change, integrate into community, or even start a new line, uh, start with us. We have to reach out a hand or get to know them. Uh, sometimes you need to be busy body uh, to ask them, you know, how are you? <laughs> yeah, the, the magic question, how are you, is a good point to start and be ready to offer yourself, your time, your heart, your vulnerability, to journey with them. And then we can see the fruits coming. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much, you. Uh, Mr. Frederick. Sam, I think that was a very uh, in-depth insight that was uh, given by Frederick. Thank you again, Mr. Frederick, for your yeah. insightful information. So, Sam, it's all yours. Oh, Corey, can I have one last uh, conclusion? <laughs> so, definitely. Well, definitely. Please. I'd like to take this opportunity to, to conclude this, that, um, yeah, all of us are here because we have a heart uh, or interest in prison work. I'd like to uh, let all of us know that all that we do, plan and talk about via all our services or volunteering or webinars like this or the round table, the networks, 
all this should be able to be translated into benefiting the prisoners. And the prisoners themselves need to be able to feel, to see and experience tangibly that they have been helped. It's the prisoners we are serving. And it's our hope to see each and every one of them to make it in life beyond prison. So that's what I want to share with all of us. Thank you very much. I, I, I caught the word tangible. And, and that word is actually means a lot of things when we are actually helping them. And thank you. Indeed, we are um, have to be part of their life. Like you said, we have to be capable a bit and ask, how are you? Indeed, it is a good advice. Thank you so much, Frederick. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Frederick. Right. So um, in our next group, uh, sorry, the next panelist, I would be interviewing Dato Del Akbar. Uh, but prior to that, I would like to encourage everyone, if you do have questions, if you can look at the screen now, you can actually um, scan the QR code to ask questions to the panelists, um, where at the end of our um, session of thoughts, we will direct the questions to the panelists for them to answer. So if you can't scan, you can actually click the link in the chat box. You can also access the, the platform for you to ask the questions. So for now, uh, I would like to invite Dato Delakpa to come on board with us. Dato, apa kabar Dato? Oh, good. Thank you very much, Sam. Oh, oh kamu punya latar belakang cantik lah. Itu kat mana tu? Yeah, dekat office, tapi dia punya latar belakang tempat lain. <laughs> Those oh, are all nampak, the, nampak the macam posh area. Sorry. Those are all MRCB project. Oh, oh very big company. And you know MRCB um, is very much involved in giving second chance to offenders. Jadi kita nak tanya satu soalan. Eh? Satu soalan pertama. Uh, uh, kita semua tahu MRCB memainkan. Sorry. Can you hear me? Sorry. Can you hear me? Only one question. Eh? Oh no no, I'm going to ask you more than that. <laughs> uh, kita semua tahu bahawa MRCB telah memainkan peranan yang penting dalam memberi peluang pekerjaan kepada ramai bekas bersalah. Uh, Datuk boleh ceritakan sedikit tak pengalaman Datuk dalam memberikan peluang kedua kepada bekas bersalah ni? Thank you, Sam. Uh... Basically, what MRCB is trying to do is uh, to create an opportunity for ex uh, convict, or, or for that matter, even uh, the current convicts, what we so call the orang yang disilir. Because in the prison term, there are two terms which they normally use. One is ODS, orang yang disilir. The other one is ODP. But for our project, we are combining it to ODS which basically are targeting uh, current prisoners who are coming to the tail end of their sentencing. So through our collaboration with prisons, uh, they are giving us um, prisoners who are having their term about uh, less than a year left with them. This PERKA project, or what we call it Peluang Kedua Anda, it's a project that we work together with the Ministry of Youth and also the Prisons Department. This project was launched somewhere in uh, November uh, 2019. Uh, and uh, we have carried on until now, um, even though we had a bit of setback during the COVID, but we are already back on track. So for this program, we are trying to give them uh, op job opportunities within the construction industry. Uh, these are only targeted to prisoners uh, that are Malaysian citizens. We are not giving it to uh, foreigners. And I've said earlier, um, the prisons through their procedures, are only giving us uh, convicts that are having about 12 months or less mm. uh, term to finish in the, in the prison. Right. But this, this one is a bit uh, difficult for us because uh, the turnover then will be very, very fast and we have a problem. So, in fact, I'm working with the prison authority to lengthen the period if they can give us uh, 24 months. Based on the fact that most uh, construction uh, 
uh, sites, they normally will uh, complete their project within that uh, one and a half years, two years uh, period. So we are looking at uh, working closely with prison if they can change a bit of their procedures to allow prisoners uh, that are having at least 24 months to come up and uh, work in the construction industry. Mm. Uh, hearing from you, uh, that to, just, just a thought that goes through my mind. Um, how many of those who, after finishing one year with you, right, actually stayed behind and continue to work for MRCB? Would you know? Uh, we have been with them. I think um, we have trained almost 202 uh, prisoners, out of which uh, 14 have been offered to continue working with the uh, construction uh, companies. But out of those, only six have taken up was uh, 18 well eight have uh, rejected the offer right even, right. even though the numbers uh, could be seen as uh, quite small but at least these are few success stories that uh, we can be proud of i agree with you dato uh -huh. and and it always starts with numbers one two three until we go further down and it is indeed every life that has been helped really matters um that goes to my second question yeah um, ada ke tak kesusahan dalam menerima mereka di tempat pekerjaan? Is there a problem having them in a workplace? Yes. Uh, it, it, it comes from very angles. First, you look at the employer themselves. I think uh, they were very skeptical at the first stage when we said, okay, we are going to introduce uh, convicts working, working in the construction industry. This is in line also with the government aspiration that we are trying to reduce the dependency of foreign workers in the construction industry. I know the numbers will be a bit low to, to complement this because the foreign workers are in thousands of them. And right. it's very difficult to, to get the uh, ODS to, to supplement those uh, areas. But at least we thought that uh, this could be a good start if we can, uh, like you said earlier, we start with small numbers and later on we see how we can work together with the prisons and increase the number. Right. It's only in the pipeline. Yeah, we are trying to bring out about 1,000 at any one time. Mm. Okay, the other constraint that uh, we, feel we face uh, at the initial stage does not only come from the employer, but we also was quite skeptical among the co-workers, <laughs> the local people or even the foreign uh, uh, workers, whether they could accept you know, this uh, convict working alongside with them. You know, the consumption industry, they always work in group. So to have them uh, working side by side, whether they are uh, going to be acceptable or otherwise. But one thing I would like to impress upon here is that having uh, put them in the uh, construction industry and the employer themselves now are coming out uh, strongly and saying that they are better uh, in terms of if, if we do comparatively among the, the, the foreign workers, they can be far more productive if compared with the uh, foreign workers. And from my observation, the main thing is that there's no language barrier. Right. Uh, so it's better than for them to work outside rather than be kept inside the four brick wall. So they are more willing to work, you know, in the outside atmosphere. Right. So what I'm hearing over here is that. Um, we need to um, promote acceptance, um, be it among the employer, be it among the co-workers, being among the colleague. So um, the promotion of the uh, acceptance is actually important in terms for them to be, um, if I may use the word, felt they belong to the work or the industry and hence why they can actually go on to work in a longer period of time. So I think it is very essential for that to happen. Um, well, I, I believe that um, Dato and your MRCB um, is actually is going to go a little bit more or perhaps longer in accepting them into the industrial, in, into this industry. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, we, we definitely would uh, want to go further than this. Because uh, I think the prisoners definitely deserve a second chance. I mean, you, you cannot be punishing them throughout their entire life. I think, uh, you know, along the way, people change. You know, so, so it's only uh, right that, you know, you start to accept them 
give them another chance and then I think from what we have right now I would say that they are really uh, a very uh, hard working group and definitely from what we have seen them uh, working alongside you know other co-workers and so on I think they really deserve a second chance to prove themselves that you know they are worthy uh, citizens that can contribute to the nation uh, upbuilding. Yes, thank you. And I think that would be um, uh, an apt uh, sentence to say that they actually will be able to contribute back to the society and the community in terms of whatever skills that they have. And down to my last message, Dato, um, what would be your message to the public in accepting the ex-offenders back to the community? Now, apakah pesan Dato dalam uh, kepada semua orang pada hari ini? Um, tentang penerimaan bekas pesalah balik ke pangkuan komuniti. I think we have to address uh, the society in totality because we we cannot be uh, addressing it uh, you know focusing on one particular group. We have got to address the family. We have got to address uh, the the uh, they themselves. We have got to address the general public. We have got to address the employer. And we also have got to address the industry. Unless and until uh, you look at it in totality, I think uh, addressing in on an ad hoc basis, I would I do not think it will help uh, in getting our desired uh, results. So I would I will look at it at uh, addressing in totality all these uh, sectors, making them really fully aware, appreciate, understand the the uh, condition of this uh, exposure because if you start labeling them like what like what currently is happening you know once you are inside uh, the prison you go out the labeling will be there forever it is difficult for them to survive definitely it's difficult. even even if you look at the government sector it's totally closed for them right it, you, you fill up the form and then there will be a section where they will ask you for your previous record have you been convicted or otherwise Habis. That's the end of it. Even now, private sectors are also slowly, you know, creeping into doing the same. They go through whatever connection and get uh, the records from the police. And once uh, you you have record, then that's the end of your interview. That's right. So that's right. how do we go from there? So that's why I say it has got to be looked in totality. Look at all the sectors and then address them um, together. And then possibly, I think it is easier to break that barrier. Thank you. Thank you for your advice, Dato. I think it is a very good advice. And it has to come from every part of the community, society, so that we may all play a role in accepting them. And because of our prejudice and discrimination, how are they supposed to be make it in life? No, we cannot just tell them, Okay, go and be well, but then we are not doing anything at all to help them at all. So thank you, Dato, for your advice. And um, thank you so much for answering those questions. <laughs> um, it, it's not an easy question to answer, but um, I'm very glad that you are in the part of um, believing that the ex-offenders uh, deserve a second chance or perhaps second chances. And so we come to the end of the forum. Um, we have the Q&A part where we wanted to um, see some of the questions that comes from the, from the floor. Yeah, Stephen? Ah, you need to unmute yourself. Unmute, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Sam, cannot... yes, we have one question from the, uh, from the floor for Mr. Frederick about uh, why, yeah, the, the question is why is it that the families, they find it so difficult in order to accept the wrongdoers or the ex-prisoners here for they have already served their term. They have went in for a purpose and the purpose has been achieved. Why is it that it is so difficult for them to accept them back since it's their own family? Um, yeah, just imagine, uh, yeah, I think some of our men uh, came to uh, let me know, for example, that they've been to prison many times and their wife and the children. Uh, they have made mistakes again and again. And I, usually the wife is the one who bear all the pain. 
uh, yeah, betrayal. And so that's why it is very difficult in that sense. And just now, as you can see, the Kintsugi, the pottery, it's not just broken once, but some of the cases, they are broken again and again and again. So to even men, uh, it is very, very difficult. Yeah, so many, many of the reasons are that. Yeah, yeah it's very difficult, but it's not impossible. I think That's families also point. need to have that ability or the courage to sustain, to walk through them. And and I believe, uh, you know, in my own experience, I've seen the uh, ex-prisoners. When they come out and if they, the families were to be there for them, uh, walk through the journey with them, through the struggles, they in fact come out to be a better human being than before they, they went into prison. They come out to be better. It's like it's like a gold that has been refined many times, you know, in the fire. It becomes more refined, a real diamond from a raw diamond. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fred. Mr. Frederick. Yeah. And um, for all the rest of the um, questions, uh, we might not be able to answer all the questions, but we would address the questions to the panelists through um, to email, and of course, then we would channel those questions back to everyone. Now, um, let me see this question. How many people are sentenced in jail in Malaysia every year? Are there plans to reduce the number of people sentenced to prison, such as diverting some to community sentence is found suitable? In Chief Faiz, would you have um, certain ideas to this? That Would you like to take up this, this question? Okay. Uh, I think currently, Swakam has been pushed forward to, with prison department in reforming prison reform. I mean, uh, the, the program is called prison reform. So one of the initiative is to, 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 um, uh, to locate prisoners outside from the prison. So currently the initiative is ongoing. So I'm not sure when it will be implemented. And uh, for the first question, how many people are sentenced to jail in Malaysia every year? Uh, I'm not sure the data. As for now, maybe the right person should be asked to the prison department. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, for for the information of um, uh, everyone over here, um, there has been an effort by the prison department and 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 also the government uh, to reduce the number because um, the overcrowding issue in prison is something that has been um, gone south for some time already. Um, there's a question over here. Uh, to Dato Dell, um, the last one, if I may ask to Dato Dell, um, what, sorry, could you share if there was preparation done, especially for those who had to supervise on your existing team in order to make this program a success? Dato Dell, would you like to answer that? Uh, as it is now, uh, when we bring in the prisoners to work at the construction site, they are still under the supervision of warden. As it is now, the regulation by prison department is that for every 10 prisoners, there will be three, uh, one warden. Uh, so we, we normally put them in a group of 30. Then we have three wardens plus another supervisor, which means to say for a group of 30, there will be at least four warden, uh, prison warden, that supervise them over and above you know, whatever work that the, the, the supervisor from the construction company uh, do provide along with it. So that in itself uh, make the environment much safer uh, for them to work alongside with the other co-workers. Wonderful. So what I'm hearing is that there are still prison wardens who are still helping to monitor and supervise while they do the work. So there is a connection between MRCB and prison department in making sure that the communication is well developed over there. Is the other thing, Sam, if I can uh, add on, yeah. is uh, the fact still remain that uh, they are still prisoners. But technically, they are still prisoners, so they come under the care of the prison <laughs> department. That's so right. They, they have got to make sure that uh, you know uh, they still supervise, even though they are outside the four brick walls, you know, working in the construction sites. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, Dato. And thank you so much, all the three panelists, um, Cik Faiz, Mr. Frederick, and also Dato Del Akbar. And also thank you, Stephen, for uh, co-moderating together with me. Stephen, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. 
It's my I pleasure. It's my <laughs> pleasure, Sam. And thank you very much for giving this opportunity to uh, co-moderate. And I want to convey my deepest thanks to all the panelists for your valuable information. Thank you again. Thank you so much, all. And, and we wanted to pass this time back to the MCs. All right. Thank you, Sam and Sipon, for the wonderful forum session. So next, we will move on to the message of hope. Okay. So today, I will I will explain a bit about this is uh, this person to you and to all of you. Okay. Message of hope for the first. This one come from Sam Kian Sang. Okay. Sam Kian Sang is a bekas pesalah yang telah menjalani hukuman penjara selama 28 tahun. So, beliau telah dibebaskan daripada penjara kajang pada tahun 2016 di atas pengampunan diraja. So, apa yang saya nampak terhadap individu ini, beliau sangat hebat. Individu yang lahir daripada uh, tirai besi yang kini keluar memberi kembali kepada masyarakat. So, kita boleh nampak macam mana sekarang Sam Kian Sang sedang Orang cakap, doing the street ministry, helping people who are really needs. So, let's we move and heard about the video about Sam Kian Sang. Yeah. Now, can you keep the door closed? Can you keep no. it closed? Oh, yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. So, those are on radio, uh, listen to this uh, screen, uh, Zoom. So, I have my personal... Uh, testimony. Lah. So my name is uh, SK Sam. So I used to stay in prison 28 years. So so I have a chance that I uh, got a pardon to go out. So now I'm a free man. So I'm uh, doing the street ministry. So give them people a chance to U-turn, uh, U-turn back. They may give them a chance to, to become uh, to a normal man, normal man as an ex prisoner. Some of the, so uh, the society people don't give them a chance, therefore, they do not have the chance to go back. Most of the people in the society that look down all this kind of ex prisoner or ex for, uh, offenders, no? so once they, they hear about this uh, ex prisoner, they seem that uh, from the beginning it's okay, then after that, they, they are not. Uh, they are not to give them a chance continuing or what. So in these people, ex prisoner, ex uh, uh, defender, so they need people to help to guide them to back to the society. If not, they are very easier for them to fall down uh, again to doing the the old things. Because why? Because they they no hope uh, when the no hope to to get uh, to get get out of that. Uh, no, there's. They are waiting to get up, but nobody will help them, especially those who have family. Their family also don't help them, the society don't accept them. Therefore, they have the very troublesome to come up. Even they find a job very difficult. So, uh, I'm a bit lucky. So, after I go out, I got a job. You know? Now, I'm doing the uh, street ministry. Lah. So, I, uh, in this ministry itself, I, I bump into many ex prisoners. They said they need help them to come to me. I recommend them to the rehab center, you know, or some of the old soft phone, recommend them to the old soft you know, center, you know. So when they need job, we can find a job for them, you know, to give them a chance. Because I, I know I have, uh, yeah, I have from this, all this, uh, I have this type of experience to guide them to, 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 to the society and that is a normal man because I'm doing this as a street minister as uh, sorry street ministry because I know most of them they want to change their life but they need people to help them uh, to give them a chance you no know? so as I some of them know me uh, because in uh, after I uh, surprise I'm not in Samuel I change a lot of people can all oh, this uh, actually is a uh, is an example for them to to become a uh, normal man, no, don't go back to the uh, what the so-called darkness, lah. Okay. So 
So this U-turn, we are doing the let them, I mean not to let them the chance to U-turn back. Uh, so they need the people to help them up uh, whatever they need, then we come. Of course, we are sincere, we don't, don't do that, not accept the people that are uh, play, on, play, play, play like this, uh, not the uh, my mind, we don't have a burger, it's a very sincere. Okay, then we can help them out. Actually, in this turn, uh, under structure of machine care, we are very really willing need to help them. No? So, as I am ex um, ex also, last time I come out, I got a pardon. No, my life uh, is, a, is a Hilton bag. No, because uh, this uh, machine care people also volunteer, also full time people, they're so very. Uh, not maybe I could say that they give you a chance to to to, to go back to the society you know? that's why I do share to let the, uh, to let them let the people know that in the society to accept them back to the society so give them a chance you know, to let them to go back to a normal person so that the, the world the society become better okay? Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sam Chansang, for the wonderful word, message of hope from the ex-offender. So, sedikit perkongsian juga berkaitan dengan Sam ni. Saya kenal dia lebih lama dari saya duduk kat penjara, sama-sama, belajar sama-sama. And I always pray some day dia akan keluar. So, God heard my doa selalu and Tuhan berikan dia peluang kedua untuk kembali kepada masyarakat so we can see how that people that uh, people are giving the opportunity to them to change they can create another opportunity to others so we can heard that Sam ada cakap people want to change but they really need people to give their chance so that's a really wonderful word from Sam actually okay next we will go into the group photograph so i would like to ask to everyone to open up your video we will take a picture of a group of photograph with all of us here so i will invite all of you to open your camera for the group photograph sessions yeah i know everybody this is the time you know this is the time when you mean you want to take a picture you'll have to you know stand in one place normal it's a new norm yeah yeah, we're gonna have a group photo via online. So yes. I will let please please switch on to your to, to your video, please, and then we can get uh, Yonghan. You are ready to take a picture? Yeah, sure, sure. So hello everyone. So I'll be your cameraman, virtual cameraman to, for today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do give your brightest smile or best pose. Yeah. Give us some moment to capture your beautiful or handsome faces. Yeah. We go for the formal first. Keep smile. Oh yeah, just a little bit more. Keep smiling, guys. <laughs> this is the longest smile that I can have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Smile is good for your health. It, yes, it's very really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think we can take a break now. All right. Yeah. Okay. Finally. Okay. Done. My cheek is okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, everyone, for the for the group photo. Yeah, thank you. Now we will have quiz. Who want to win some prizes? Have you see? You want? Cannot. Yes, you cannot. of course. <laughs> <laughs> Committing. You know? Okay. Now for the quiz, here is the QR code uh, for you to scan. Okay. Um, uh, we can go to the slide. Yes, look at it. This is the QR code. Please use your phone and scan the QR code. Or there's a link as well, which is going up right now in the chat box. So you can click on the link and then you can answer some questions there. A special reminder to the organizing committee. I know you all want to get your hands on the prizes, but this is only for our dear participants. Yeah. So organizing committee, you are not allowed to join this quiz. Yeah. So Hafizi, jangan ya. <laughs> yes, yes, sure. We open for the audience to participate in the this quiz. It's really a wonderful gift and present that were prepared for all of you. So we can see there are a lot of present and prize available to win. Okay. So first prize we can see. Their pencil box come special from the Penjara Wanita Kajang. Wow. So you can see the beautiful pencil box. Uh, handmade, uh, handmade by the prisoner. Face mask from the Penjara Wanita Kajang. Also, you can see how beautiful is it. Uh, during this now pandemic, uh, now we go to endemic already. So we need the face mask already. So they are beautiful face mask. So we also have passport holder. Uh, hand a kitchen, hand a chief and small purse and kitchen. So we can see there are a lot of presents that you can win. This is very the... limited edition, right? Yeah, a busy, yes, uh. it's really We cannot get it anywhere. Edition. Lazada, Shopee, yes. no one can be. It's, you can only get it in prison. That's all. Yes, no <laughs> Lazada, no Shopee, no 10, 10 days. Huh? We are not selling there. It's special from the prison. So we are doing this because we want to support the prison um, offenders there. We need to show how we are support for the reintegration process. So that's why the present is really, really special for all of you. So let's participate, guys. So we have at least five or five or eight minutes to participate. Uh, let's do the um, quiz. Let's answer the correct, the most yeah. correct um, answer. The highest one will be uh, chosen as a winner. Yeah. As, as much as possible, we have uh, quite a hundred plus people here, excluding the committee. So I think it is a great chance for you to go. It's uh, something very, very interesting. It's uh, you just you just need to answer a few questions there, which is very simple, I believe. So uh, I have not seen the questions. <laughs> so yeah, that will be good. So um, are we ready to see the answers for the quiz? Or we still wait. We give a chance to them to participate. Hurry up, guys! Let's do the big, big chance to participate. Yeah.
now let's when we decrease we give a time to them five ten winner for today quiz guys participate guys you have still you have time Second. Okay, we can do countdown now. Yeah. <laughs> so close. Ten, nine, eight, eight seven, six, eight, five, four, three, two, one, and the quiz Thank is Thank you. Thank you, Grace everyone, for the closed. Thank All you, right. everyone. Quiz is closed now. Yeah, thank you for participating. Now let's see what are the answers are. We ready with the answers? Yes. Ah, okay. Here, what are the three core values of Uton Project? Answers: C, equal opportunity, reconciliation, acceptance. Then, uh, which organization started Uton Project? Malaysian Care. Well, the next one. We have uh, how many prisons are there in Malaysia? There's thirty-nine. How many prisoners have gone through the pro system? Over oh, forty thousand. Yeah. And the next question, oh, okay, here yeah, this is, how does the uh, Malaysia Prison Department define uh, recidivism going back to the prison within three years? Yeah, that's the one. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll announce the winners for this, uh, for this quiz later in the session. Please stay on. Yeah, don't leave. Okay. You might be one of the winners who got the pencil box. I like the pencil box. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, next, a very interesting session. Message of hope. Okay. Now, let's get into a real life experience from an ex offender. I know you have been hearing about him earlier. You from just now three o'clock. Everybody be saying Hafizi. He's a star, star, uh, star or VVIP star. <laughs> our star studded uh, person here today. So and now this person is with us today, successful in his career as a financial advisor, spending his precious time and energy serving Malaysian care to bring more ex offenders to a better part in life. He's none other than my co MC today, Mr. Hafizi. The stage is yours. Yes, thank you, Chris. Okay, so Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera buat anda semua. First of all, thank you sebab sertai this event U-Turn Day 2021. Walaupun secara maya, saya rasa it's really big and really meaningful to us. Okay, so kalau nak bercerita berkaitan dengan um, this project and how actually uh, I started from the lower ground and until now, actually it's a big journey. It's a long journey. Actually, I, I start to be present in 2013. I released by 2015 and continue my study. Uh, I always be supported by the Blanchion Care and also prison department. I know Puan Kau Salia there. They always be my supporter. Always want to see how I punya progress. Uh, always keep support me. Also my brother Frederick, Sam, here all from Malaysian Care staff. I'm really thankful to all of you. Okay, so kalau nak bercerita mengenai uh, perjalanan hidup saya bermula daripada bawah sehingga di mana saya berada sekarang So it's really a long journey So saya memang rasa kesusahan Macam mana mula-mula after I release from the prison It's really hard to come back to the society It's really a negative stigma uh, Saya rasa takut untuk berhadapan dengan masyarakat luar Saya terfikir apa stigma masyarakat terhadap saya Selepas saya keluar daripada penjara so, benda tu sangat menghantui saya. Even belum release from the prison also, I already be like, oh, apa yang akan jadi? I akan questioning myself every day. One month before release from the prison, I already thinking about that. It's really like macam satu benda yang menghantui hidup saya. Orang nak bebas rasa happy, tapi I'm not. I really like, apa akan jadi bila saya keluar? So, actually, with this project, U-Turn Project adalah satu program yang sangat baik. Sangat baik sebab mengajak masyarakat untuk mula untuk menerima Untuk memberikan harapan baru 
untuk memberikan peluang kepada bekas-bekas pesalah, bekas-bekas banduan untuk keluar dan kembali kepada masyarakat. Dan saya percaya sebenarnya peluang dan harapan itu adalah benda yang cukup bermakna bagi mereka. Sebab saya sudah merasai bagaimana kehidupan di dalam pengharapan dan impian serta peluang adalah satu benda yang sangat-sangat kami harapkan daripada masyarakat di luar. Sebab itulah bila saya diberi peluang untuk menyertai Malaysian Care sebagai salah seorang um, volunteer, saya sangat berbesar hati dan saya juga berterima kasih kepada Jabatan Penjara Malaysia yang sudi untuk memberikan peluang kepada saya untuk kembali kepada penjara untuk giving back to them. Saya pernah cakap dengan uh, saya punya uh, case worker Mr. Frederick and also Sam saya cakap dengan orang, I want to giving back to the society and now I'm giving back to them. So I masuk ke penjara bagi support, giving that you still have a chance. You still have your opportunity. That's why dalam hidup sebenarnya kita tak perlu pun nak tunggu peluang itu dicipta oleh orang lain. Sebab itu setiap kali saya masuk ke penjara, mesej yang saya selalu sampaikan kepada mereka adalah you need to create your own opportunity. Kalau manusia dekat luar tak mampu untuk memberikan peluang itu, mengapa kita hendak henti dekat situ? Kita perlu mencari peluang. Kita yang nak teruskan kehidupan. Saya setuju dengan apa yang yang dicakap oleh Oyen tadi. Kita kena start moving. It's all about ourselves. Diri kita yang menentukan siapa kita di masa depan. So, Alhamdulillah sekarang uh, saya dah ada satu kerjaya yang sangat baik saya rasa dengan kerjaya sebagai seorang financial advisor and one of the top in the my company also saya menjadi saya sangat rasa happy berkongsi apa yang saya ada so walaupun saya seorang bekas pesalah perkara itu mampu untuk mengubah persepsi masyarakat dengan apa yang saya sudah lalui manusia dekat luar sangat susah dan sangat tidak percaya kepada proses sebab apa yang mereka nampak adalah oh Hafizi already success but people outside didn't know how struggle how the process, how the journey that I need to lalui yang sangat-sangat struggle start from I keluar daripada prison, I continue my study in my degree I'm uh, I'm graduate from University Malaysia Sabah graduate in international finance uh, degree bachelor in international finance and I continue my master Alhamdulillah last year I already passed and I already graduate as a master holder uh, in monetary economics. So now I'm giving back. I want to giving back to the society because society is already giving a lot to me. So since I'm in the prison, I sangat rasa um, happy, berbangga dengan support daripada masyarakat luar sebenarnya. So that's why bila saya dah keluar, saya ada satu harapan. Saya ada satu harapan untuk memberi kembali kepada masyarakat. And now what I'm doing is I want to give my fully support to the prisoner. I want to support them to give a chance to them to produce their new life. Because we believe everyone, if you have and you give their chance to change, actually they can change their life. You can see how a lot of people, you can see Oyen, how his family giving opportunity, his wife gives us fully support to him. And now you can see Oyen is a, not only a normal person actually, he's an artist songwriter is a famous person and you can see how Sam can Sam before also you can see how a lot of people support him now he can giving back to the society back to the ministry of streets helping for the people who are need and now it's my turn to giving back to the society that's why I wanted to join Malaysian Care helping Malaysian Care and support Malaysian Care to giving back to the society using the Malaysian Care as a platform to me. And what the biggest message that I want to give to all of you, stop judging us, give a chance to us, give the equal opportunity to us. Because if you give a chance to us, we can prove it to you that we can change and we can become somebody in the future. And maybe one day, the people that come out from the prison actually become more wonders more uh, hidup dia yang sangat lebih bahagia compare dengan apa yang dia dah lalui because kehidupan mereka di dalam sebenarnya banyak mengajar makna kehidupan 
apa itu erti kebebasan, apa itu erti kerjasama dan banyak makna kehidupan yang telah dipelajari di dalam. Berilah peluang kepada mereka, berilah uh, peluang yang sama, berilah ruang kepada mereka di dalam masyarakat. Kerana ruang dan peluang itu adalah satu benda yang sangat sukar untuk diberi. Tetapi itulah yang sangat didahagakan oleh mereka. Jika ruang itu ada, mereka mampu untuk berubah. Jika peluang itu diberi, mereka mampu untuk buktikan peluang kedua, peluang ketiga dan peluang itu sentiasa ada untuk semua. Dan itu saja daripada saya. Sekian terima kasih buat anda semua. Thank you Malaysian Care and thank you for the U-turn day and thank you for the participant today. Thank you. Thank you so much Hafizi. It's inspiring to hear from you Hafizi. I'm really glad to hear from uh, from you and it's uh, really like a, it's a, it's a, it's what you say, huh? uh, what Malaysian Care has done, it is the fruit, you are the fruit, you are one of the example of the fruit. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. We will continue our next session. We are slightly a bit delayed. Uh, hope all of you still stay on with us. We've got a, just a couple of more sessions here. Now we'll go to the next one, which is a community based recovery analysis, which is by our Miss Santa Orijitam. She's the policy advocacy and research team of, from Malaysian Care. Miss Santa, please. Can a uh, uh, technical team can un unmute Miss Santa to start the session? Sorry, I've unmuted. Ah, okay, okay, no worries. Come. Good afternoon. I'd like to give you a sneak peek at the results of our community based recovery situation analysis. We wanted to find out the needs of ex prisoners as they reintegrate back into society, especially as it gets closer to 2030. That's the year that the Malaysian Prison Department aims for two-thirds of the prisoners to be undertaking rehabilitation in the community through the parole system and compulsory attendance orders and other programs. As of September 2nd, there were 56,730 inmates in the 39 prisons, which is 29% over capacity. Next slide, please. Thanks to everyone who helped and supported this research, especially the eight prisoners who gave us their feedback. They live in four halfway homes around the Klang Valley and are aged between 32 and 73. Two were women, the rest were men, and all but one of them were also recovering substance abusers. We thank all of those working with and on behalf of ex-prisoners who were interviewed or completed the Google survey. And special thanks to volunteers Joanna Lee and Frederick Tong for organizing the data and creating the graphics and charts, and to my colleague Hua Hui En for improving the PowerPoint slides. Next slide, please. The smaller and newer organizations have served around 10 ex prisoners since they started, while the Parole and Community Reintegration Division at JPM has worked with over 40,000 parolees. APM defines recidivism as those who are back in prison within three years. The recidivism rate ranges from as low as 0.4% for JPM's parolees to as high as 75%. Substance abusers are most, most likely to relapse. One of the ex-prisoners uh, told me he had been in eight halfway homes. When asked what qualifications were needed to serve in CBR, the majority said job experience in community or social work, especially personal experience as a prisoner. One service provider who is an ex-prisoner said, one of our greatest strengths is that we are ex-addicts. We can feel with them and understand them and we know when they are up to their tricks. Looking at the current facilities and programs, respondents rated job placement and skills training as the strongest. ASP Nobin Chowdhury of JPM's Parole and Community Reintegration Division pointed out that all district parole officers, in collaboration with the Social Security Organization, are now registering parolees and ex-prisoners at the My Future Jobs portal so that after release, they can start a new life. JPM also has the Corporate Smart Internship Program, which uh, Intek Fais mentioned earlier, and Resettlement Program. And similar services are provided by NGOs. The biggest concern is childcare. 
ASP Nobin no, noted that JPM is on track to meet the 2030 target through the parole program, compulsory attendance centers, pr prisoners released on license, prisoners under supervision, and is also planning a day parole program. But he says in-depth study is needed to find out how many more halfway homes, staff and programs will be needed before 2030. You can see that the majority of the respondents said that services for ex-prisoners as we approach 2030 are not enough and the a big need is temporary shelter after release from prison as of september 2nd almost 60 percent of the prisoners are in on drug related offenses and while there are many drug rehabilitation centers and programs provided by the government ngos and even commercial enterprises there are few halfway homes and programs for ex-prisoners who are not substance abusers especially women. JPM runs 15 halfway homes for male parolees and male ex-prisoners who are looking for jobs and accommodation. Female ex-prisoners who are substance abusers are sent to DIC Pahang and female non-substance abusers can get jobs through that CSI program. But as far as we know, Malaysian Care's Ruma Kepercayaan is the only halfway home for women ex-prisoners. So how come Commissioner Gerald Joseph estimates that up to 300 more halfway homes will be needed in the run-up to 2030? One respondent, Associate Professor Dr. Rusti Abdul Rashid at Rumah Sinakase, suggested that the government should support NGOs providing these services. And he also said, you know, because the number of offenders who are in on drug offences is so high, that the Ministry of Health should handle treatment of addictions, which could be decriminalised. That would reduce the number of drug substance abusers in prisons. And he also suggested that the community psychiatry model, which has been used in Hospital Permai and Hospital Bahagia, could be used, in which 10 case managers can handle up to 20 patients. And he explained that we now have the medication, so they don't need to be institutionalized. Both ex-prisoners and service providers shared examples of the best practices they have seen in community-based recovery. The role in community reintegration at JPM and Ruma Sinakase provide shelter, food and work, while the Discharge Prisoners Aid Society offers financial aid to those who plan to start their own businesses. Its treasurer, Alfred Wong, who's here today, says, we keep in contact with them and journey with them until they can be on their own. Ex-prisoners are also rehabilitated at faith-based homes like Malaysian Care, Prison Fellowship Malaysia's Shalom Place, Second Chance Community Home, Community Friends, Kenosis, and Vineyard Keeper. Panase's therapeutic community gives residents roles and responsibilities, and they progress through phases of accountability and earn privileges. Malaysian AIDS Council's Taman Project was an HIV, STI, hepatitis risk reduction program for ex-prisoners returning to the community, but unfortunately, it ended in December last year. And the Ministry of Health, offers methadone maintenance therapy for recovering substance abusers. Then we also did a word cloud. Next slide, please. The, freak, the word most used was jobs. The majority called for more job placement, skills training, and help to start their own businesses. And the second most used words were family and legal. As uh, we mentioned in the U-turn project, one of the three core values is family reconciliation. And one ex-prisoner said, we need support from family, friends, and others close to us. If they don't accept us, we would go back to the same place. Next slide, please. The majority of respondents, 65%, believe that voluntary rehabilitation works best for substance abusers. Several called for the cure and care service centers under AADK to become residential again. And one prisoner, ex-prisoner, recommended in-depth specialized training in community-based recovery for AADK officers. Next slide, please. This was the main question in our survey. Would you be willing to provide such facilities or services in future, either on your own or in partnership with others? And we're very encouraged that almost half, 41%, said yes. Now, let's see what they're willing to do. 
This is what the respondents said, and you can see that most importantly, ex-prisoners themselves are willing to work and volunteer in rehab. Uh, parole is ready to link to relevant organizations. Panasi is also ready to provide to transition housing after care. Kinosis is willing to take on more ex-prisoners. Prison Fellowship Malaysia and Malaysian AIDS Council said they can consider subject to funding. Breakthrough is already working with care, AADK in the hospitals and is willing to work with others. And community friends uh, said they will when they're fully equipped and ready. Umar Sinakasi is planning another halfway home in Jalebu next year. And it's a big yes also from Malaysian Care, Tapa Prison Ministry, Committed Malaysia and the Vineyard Keeper. So that's a very quick summary of our findings, which I hope will be useful as we plan our services for the future. And thank you all to those, thank you to all of those who are attending and to all of those who participate in the research. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Ms. Santa, for the insight here. Next, we would like to uh, uh, invite the uh, song presentation by this Rumah Petros, Rumah Kepercayaan and Friends. This song was originally composed by the 10th Kuala Lumpur Boys Brigade volunteers together with RPRK based on the animation and typography done by the Boys Brigade. So let's watch this performance. Yeah, thank you.
Amazing! Thank you, thank you, Mo, so much. This song is actually called the U Turn Way. It was originated by R P R K with its chorus composed by R K. Um, it's written to encourage all ex prisoners to keep on the right track of reintegration, as well to invite each and every one of us to take part in the good work. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for this. Uh, for, for the for the video earlier and now we have come to our final session here and to do the closing address we would like to invite the archbishop of catholic church his grace archbishop julian leo to uh, to, to give his address your grace please a uh, very good evening to all of you hearing me loud and clear yes yes, yes. your grace thank you uh, thank you everyone for staying on. I think we've increased the numbers or we have gone down slightly, but nevertheless, I am really humbled to be here um, to just say Shabbos, to thank Malaysian Care, to thank all of you for being part of this solution to, I think, this, this whole... Uh, prisoners' uh, struggle to, to get reintegrated back to society is an uphill task. I think even, even for us, uh, without any record, um, to, to survive in society today, especially during this time, is so challenging. What more for our ex-prisoners? Um, and I think for all of us here, I think we are the converted ones. We are the ones that you have mentioned, uh, groups giving equal opportunities, uh, reconciling, trying to reconcile family members with ex-prisoners and to, to accept them for who they are. I just want to touch how many times Jesus says to forgive our brother or sister. Uh, St. Peter answers, is it seven times? The answer given was 77 times. Or every time someone asks for forgiveness, we must forgive. As we turn to God, as we ourselves need forgiveness for our many faults for our many weaknesses. So I think today's session, for me at least, it's very enlightening and to re-emphasize, I think, we cannot do this alone. No one group, no one NGO, no one church, no one faith, no government alone can, can do, can reintegrate our prisoners, ex-prisoners, back to society. It is a collective responsibility. It is something I, I really believe, and after hearing uh, from so many of you, especially those who have gone through the difficult path of trying to be reintegrated, and I want to congratulate the many, the few of you who had shared your stories. Um, it is an inspiration to all of us. Um, and I hope these stories can be told far and wide that society needs to hear these success stories so that we can change our cultural mindset. Um, I think it is, it is time that all of us, as mentioned by by the panelists also. It is a gigantic effort for everyone. Um, and I think more so for, I think, faith-based organizations like, like, like today's gathering. Um, I'm happy our Catholic Prison Fellowship also are involved, um, going in every week 
every month um, I myself have gone into prison uh, not because of committing an offense but I go in to celebrate Christmas, uh, Easter, masses uh, for the death row, death row prisoners and I ask myself also how many of us uh, do really know uh, uh, an ex-prisoner as a friend? Do we really know them as, as a person? Or is it just a statistic? Is it just someone I, I, I minister to uh, when I go into the prison? I just spend a few hours with them. Do I have friends after they have come out who who are ex-prisoners and and maybe the question that we should ask ourselves is how can I be a friend to them? What are their needs? What do they really need? Have I asked them? I think Frederick shared or somebody else. How are you? How can I help you? By asking them rather than thinking we know what they need and very often we are wrong. Maybe to listen to them and to work with them. Um, and as I said earlier, it's a collective responsibility. All of us need to play our part. More so, um, we who are exposed and today, the hundred odd of us maybe can be a catalyst to, to initiate to continue to, uh, to let others know and to be part of the solution. Um, and everyone is precious. Every person created in God's image and likeness is precious in God's eyes. And uh, I, I like that part where our prisoners have have uh, gone through their sentence, have paid their price after so many years, and yet when they come out, they are they continue paying that sentence um, within their own families and society. So today, uh, I just want to encourage, as I mentioned that these stories be told um, far and wide, maybe anonymity uh, to, to safeguard some of your identity perhaps, but if, if you are daring to share, I'm sure your powerful sharing can, can change lives, can touch hardened hearts. Uh, and I pray, I pray that we will be part of this solution. And thank you, uh, those who have shared um, that you want space, you want hope, you want a second chance. And we in society, I think we have to give you this. You deserve this second chance, third chance, fourth chance. And I pray that I will never judge, I will never judge anyone again, especially those who have gone through this difficult journey. And uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. And uh, I pray that the church and faith-based organizations, all faith groups must come together and we must take the lead we must take the lead uh, and, and make a change in, in our society. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Grace, Archbishop Julian, for your inspiring speech as well. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, now we'll have the call to action. Hafizi. All right. So, sebelum mengakhiri kita punya session pada hari ini, saya ingin menjemput semua peserta, audience yang menyertai sesi pada hari ini untuk sama-sama call to action, call to pledge which is kita sama-sama menurunkan petition 
tanda sokongan terhadap this project untuk memastikan dia mencapai kepada matlamat. So saya meminta kepada anda semua untuk scan this code uh, and then place your commitment in view of the integration of offense offenders. We would like to call everyone to sign up these pledges. Yeah, please scan this code and pledge your commitment in view of the reintegration of ex offenders. Yeah, so you can click on the link and as the QR code as well. So there's a few things you need to just uh, put it in, and then uh, it's for the support for equal opportunity for family reconciliation and uh, community acceptance. Right. So this is what we are looking at. Yeah, I'll just give you a one or two minutes to actually go in and uh, pledge. Yeah, so, uh, signing the pledge. Yeah, let's, let's show our support to this project, guys. It's really big and meaningful to them, and also big event and big hope of them. We are bringing their hope. We are bringing their chance to life. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, we will go to the next slide, the message hope of hope. Now, if you like to send a message of hope to the inmates in the prison, okay, please scan this QR code as well and send your words of wisdom to them. Now, you'll be wondering what you want to say to them. You know, we are not, we're not able to visit the prisons or anything like that, but your message is so important to them. Okay, your message of wisdom is so important to them. They want to know that people outside the prison care for them. Uh, would like to give them some message of hope. Uh, not message of uh, uh, any message that can lift them up, not give up on life. Yeah. So yeah. it could be any message that you like them to hear. Yeah. yeah. We need to give a few of words to support of them. Yeah. So please.